as they say in Spanish, hola, which means hello. Welcome to Sumit Academy. I do hope that you are subscribed to my channel. If not, please do so now so that you do not miss out on my previous or future videos. In this video, the second of a two part series, we shall continue to talk about the rights and obligations of citizens. Let us now look at the fundamental duties. In return for every right, society expects its citizens to do certain things which are collectively known as duties. It was expected that the citizens of free India would perform their duties willingly. But things did not go as expected. The original constitution enforced on 26 January 1950 did not mention anything about the duties of the citizen. Therefore, 10 fundamental duties were added in part 4 of the constitution under article 51A in 1976 through the 42nd constitutional amendment act. However, whereas fundamental rights are justiciable, the fundamental duties are non-justiciable. It means that the violation of fundamental duties, that is the non-performance of these duties by citizens is not punishable. The 10 duties listed in the Constitution of India, let's have a look at them. The first one is to abide by the Constitution and respect its ideals and institutions, the national flag and the national anthem. The second, to cherish and follow the noble ideals which inspired our freedom struggle. Third, to uphold and protect the sovereignty, integrity and unity of India. Fourth, to defend the country and render national service when called upon to do so. Fifth, to promote harmony and the spirit of common brotherhood amongst all the people of India and to renounce practices derogatory to the dignity of women. Sixth, to value and preserve the rich heritage of our composite culture. Seventh, to protect and improve the natural environments including forests, lakes, rivers and wildlife. Eighth, to develop the scientific temper, humanism and the spirit of inquiry and reform. Ninth, to safeguard public property and not to use violence. And finally, the tenth one, to serve towards excellence in all spheres of individual and collective activity. Now besides this, a new 11th duty has been added after the passage of Right to Education Act 2009. This states that a parent or guardian has to provide opportunities for the education of his child or ward between the ages of 6 and 14 years. Let us now look at the difference between civil and social rights. Civil rights are the rights that belong to the citizen by virtue of his citizenship alone and which are protected by law. These ensure the safety of the citizens and their ability to act. Civil rights are viewed as natural possessions of individuals which had only to be protected from the state. 
that is why they are often designated in negative terms social rights entitle a citizen to some level of well being and of social security they are popular aspirations that are not always enforceable even where they are endorsed by the state because of socio economic or ideological constraints let me give you some examples right to housing right to adequate standard of living right to health and the right to science and culture now how is social audit a determiner of rights and obligations social audit as a term was first used in the 1950s social audits are now widely accepted as an important mechanism to address corruption and strengthen accountability in government service delivery basically it is an effort undertaken to ensure that the work done by the government is actually benefiting the citizens it is thus an account of the work done by the government in reference to the welfare of the citizens local government specifically should be carried out with a complete understanding of the requirements of the citizens it is a continuous process and not a one time event it is an effort to understand measure report as well as improve the effectiveness and the efficiency of a government it is a type of social control over withdrawal and usage of state exchequer funds by the government through it the resources used by the public agencies for development initiatives are shared with the people therefore it is an opportunity for the citizens to scrutinize the development initiatives and ensure transparency and accountability let's have a quick look at the social audit in india various policies and programs have been implemented by the indian state for the benefit of its citizens through the 73rd amendment to the indian constitution the gram sabha at the local level has been empowered to conduct social audit in the rural or village sector similarly the rti empowers the citizens to demand for and inspect information regarding public records the national rural employment guarantee act 2005 which was later renamed as manrega mandates the regular conduct of social audit of works sanctioned under gram sabha at least once every 6 months there are six monthly public hearings called jan audit manch where the scheme and the process of social auditing is publicly analyzed social audit is thus a very effective tool for strengthening grassroots democracy the involvement of the local people leads to a heightened sense about rights and obligations many people in india are still overwhelmed by the idea of being ruled by politicians due to this common citizens do not get easily involved in development activities some public authorities too avoid social audits there should be stringent legal penalties for not following the social audit principles let's have a look at what is the role of civil society as a guardian of rights and duties on the one hand civil society holds appeal for liberal democratic elites 
who see in it the ability to act as a check on the power of the state. On the other hand, it can also appeal to marginalized social movement actors who see in it the chance to expand and deepen the democratic space. Therefore, civil society is alternatively viewed as a source of legitimacy and stability for government and a source of resistance against arbitrary and oppressive government. Civil society is thus the realm of education for citizens about their rights and duties. Voluntary organizations serve as watchdogs attempting to pressurize government agencies to uphold the spirit of the state's laws and implement policies. History confirms the crucial importance of active citizens individually and collectively in driving social progress. Well, that's all from me in this, the second of my two-part video on the rights and obligations of citizens. I hope you liked my video. Do share it on your Facebook page. And do subscribe to my channel so that you do not miss out on my previous or future videos. Till later then, cheerio!